Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. It is my honor to introduce John Farader, an incredible producer, talent rep, and rock star. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank John, you for having so me. Nice. To the Congratulations, show. anthems and lullabies. Fifth album in four years. Yes, we, we are quite busy. We, we, we try to write a lot and record a lot. I've got the, uh, the privilege of still being able to play with some of my best friends from college, mm -hmm. and we've played for years. Uh, I think uh, when we started doing this, Reagan was president, oh and um, <laughs> we've gone through a few things, but we've had a blast, you know, and the longer you do it, the more fun you have, and you kind of realize you've got to do it for the right reasons, you know, when you're doing this, because we all have day jobs and, and other careers. I realized at a certain point when you top 40 in age, you're never going to be top 40 on the charts. <laughs> <laughs> so just make the songs good and, fun and have a good time with it. And that's what so we're trying to do. So important, right? And you went to college in Santa Barbara, right? Yeah, we're both from we're Santa Barbara. Yeah. We love I'm, that I'm sure we were yeah. up on uh, San Marcos Pass at some point, mm -hmm. you know, passing each other. But I graduated from UCSB and worked radio up there. I uh, was the, the uh, program director at KCSB and I worked at KTMS when you were growing Classic, up. Classic, man. And uh, I still have lots of friends and family and people that are up there. and. Like I said, playing with the band. A lot of bands come out of there. Lots. Huh? A lot of good bands. Well, mm -hmm. the Tearaway started in 1981. We were all, you know, this tall. And then um, bands like uh, uh, Ugly Kid Joe and Toad the Wet Sprocket and My, yep, I know and all of them. Yep. Most of the Beach Boys, mm -hmm. you know, are from there. Either live there or come from Joe there. Joe Cocker. So. I grew up. My, my mom was best friends with Joe Cocker up on the hill there. That's right. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a great place. You, it's just hard to make a living there. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have money. When you have yeah. money, then you go to Santa Barbara. We used to say Santa Barbara is the home of the uh, newlywed and nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> Still is that one. It's a tweetable favorite was one. But now you're here based in La La Land. Yes. And you're working by day and playing by night. I love what you're doing with that because I follow John on Instagram and he's been touring the world with his band as seen with the president of the United States. And he's, he's now here. I mean, really, truly, you live such a, a full life. Well I, well, I tried to. I, I had a life-changing experience in 2009, uh, end of April 2009, I died. I flatlined a couple times. I had a staph, staph infection. I checked in the Cedars, and it was all over. Wow. And wow. through the grace of God and some good doctors, and I think a lot of prayer, I, I lived. And um, when you go through an experience like that, mm -hmm. the change isn't immediate, as you know. What happens is you just start to look at your surroundings and your environment, mm -hmm. and you, you know, I realized, hey, I, I could be gone, so I'm here for a reason, so I've got to find out what that reason mm. is. And let's live life and let's enjoy what it's about. So for me, um, as a, I was an agent, I was at William Morris for about 19 years, and I have been a manager and a producer since then. I produced Garth Brooks' uh, last CBS special from Vegas, produced the Arsenio Hall show. We just produced a brand new pilot uh, for Name That Tune for CBS Primetime. It's, you want to find these things and get them done. So between what I do as a representative and as a producer, the thing I get most excited about is the thing I call psychic income. It's finding talent and unleashing them to the world and giving them the opportunity to live their dreams. And we've got a couple in particular right now, a young band called the Folkos out of Lancaster. Everyone's gonna hear about them. They are amazing, they're the real life Partridge family. Two parents, four kids, they all play, they sing. I post their stuff. There's a little 16 year old girl from Liverpool mm -hmm. named Millie Courtney who has mm -hmm the voice of an angel. So but, when but I get to do those do, why things. Why do you call it psychic income? Because it's, it's spiritual for It's you? spiritual. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't matter whether you make money or not. At the end of the day, if you're good at what you do, everybody makes money. But it's a feeling you get that you just can't, you can't put a financial value on it, but it's when you get up in the morning and it's what fuels you to do what you mm -hmm. do. Have you always been in tune with that? No, I was raised Irish Catholic and several people in my family became Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff. So we had a fractured religious experience growing up and I grew up as an army brat, so I lived all mm -hmm. over the world. Mm -hmm. So you, you, what happens as guys, like we're idiots, right? No, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's, insane, and you know, insane. Yeah. And what happens is at a certain point, hopefully, and in, in hopefully you've experienced this because you're younger than me, so you're the head of the game. You realize it's far more important to do right than to be right. Mm -hmm. And the moment that clicks in with you, everything is different. And it's it's a weird thing. I don't, you know, I had to do a lot of wrong things to get to that point and realize it doesn't matter if you're right. It just matters are is what you're doing is that right? Mm -hmm. And are you are you kind to people? Right. And sometimes, you know, you have gotta make mistakes to figure that out. When we were talking earlier about dog rescues, mm -hmm. I support every dog rescue I can because 
a dog is always happy to see you. Hmm. No matter how bad your day Isn't is. Isn't that so true? They're always just full of love. They're full of love. So let's give back as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So important. And I think that Hollywood <clears throat> and is really going through that. We're going through a time of the cause and effect of ethics. And, and whether that's good or bad or how that's shaking out, that's what's coming about is we're birthing this new era where, you know, people like you or you're like, you have to live your truth. Like, this is your truth. Your music is your truth. You have to have that expression. And it's really cool to meet somebody that's very powerful in agency and management and is like, and I got to be true to what, what my heart desires. Well, no, that's, so that's very kind of you. I mean, there's been a, a seismic shift within the industry. It's not over by any stretch of the imagination. And no one is innocent. Everybody has known things that have gone on for, for years and years. Mm -hmm. And it just has to change. Mm -hmm. And we have to do whatever we can to change things, you know, for, for the better. And hopefully we can. Money is a very uh, powerful aphrodisiac. And a lot of people are swayed by it. And they will do things that aren't necessarily good because there's money involved, money, money and power. And if we can just kind of focus on what, you know, we're all in this together. If you can start to focus on that, then you'll start to see the change a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it, it's coming. So. Yeah. There's something so powerful. You said so many wonderful things there. I can't even capture them all. But one of the things that I love that you said is not only um, about do doing good because doing good is the right thing to do, but also doing good because it feels good. It's like, you know, it's um, for me, it's where my happiness comes from. I like doing right. good, you know. But so, so for you, it sounds like that shift happened right when you had this sort of near-death experience. It didn't. It didn't. It happened afterwards. It took me a couple of years to realize, first off, when you're in the, cl when you're in the client business, and I'm in the client business, I work with Piers Morgan and Nancy O'Dell and Mike Wolf from American Pickers and Mark Wahlberg who does Antiques Roadshow and Paige Davis who does Trading Spaces and a bunch Never of Never heard of one people. of those people, ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing is they're, they're really good people and they're really loyal clients and they're really good friends. Jojo Wright, we were just uh, talking about, is a client of ours from um, KISS FM. Sam Rubin's a client of mine. They're these people I've been fortunate enough to work with. I get a good feeling working with them knowing that their talents are being shared with everybody else that's out there. And a guy like, you know, Piers, when I was sick and went through the agency change, everybody wanted him. He was on America's Got Talent. It was the top show in, in, in America every summer. He could have left and gone anywhere. And he just said, whatever you do, I'm going with you. Mm. And we forged this great partnership. And he's a great friend and one of the nicest guys. That's what I refer to as psychic income. It's mm. the feeling you get that nothing can buy that feeling. So I try to look at those moments through the day, and I have a phenomenal partner who I have to say happy birthday to. Her, uh, my partner in business, her name's Jamie Grudemeyer, and hopefully she's not working today. Jamie, happy and birthday! She's out with her fiance today, Mark. <laughs> but happy birthday to um, Jamie. You're just Aww. a great partner. Mm, that's so amazing. That's I you, love that. I mean, you've mentioned so many incredible people who are a part of your community. Who do you look to for inspiration, or who do you seek guidance from? It's a good question. I, I, um, I've gone through enough in life that you've got a core group of friends who are really with you and they accept you for who you are. And I used to always look at, you know, the true measure of a successful relationship, whether it be a dating relationship, a marriage, or just a friendship, is as bad as it is has to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And those are the people yeah. that I go to because they know me for who I am, the good, the bad, the ugly. The kind, whatever it is, they know me for who I am, and I can go to them. And when they're like, "Hey, you know, I, I don't think you're right here, or I think you're off base," I have to listen. I have to go back and listen. We had um, I had an amazing thing. It's coming up on a year. A year ago, my my friend Rodney um, Bingenheimer, who's Rodney on the Rock, he's the main guy from K Rock. They unceremoniously called him in and just said, "Hey, we're changing things and we're firing you." Been there for 43 years. Mm. So I've had the privilege of working with Rodney the last year, and we put him back on Sirius. And I just have to say this because he's the greatest guy. Oh, this ah. is this is his Christmas CD, the second volume. We have a song on this. The Tearaway is called "Hell of a Christmas," but it's a great rock Christmas record. So you can get it online. You can always hit me up either the Tearaways, Tearaways uh, uh, at the Tearaways USA or www.tearaways.com, or through our offices at the Alternative. So I'm pretty easy to reach. We're three one zero five two six eight seven five zero. I love that wow. Christmas music. It's like. Thanksgiving, the day after, I'm like, good, we get to put on some Christmas music. Like, There's nothing better than having some Christmas tunes. And I, I love the title. Like, Santa's got a GTO. That's so <laughs> oh, yeah. tough. I love it, volume two, right? I love that. And then you were, when you were talking about the records, is, um, you know, we've had 
we've actually done five in the last four years. Wow. Five. Congratulations. And mm -hmm. I've had the privilege, you know, I go to artists that I like, Alexander Nikita, who's known as the Petit Picasso. Wow. All of these are, you can get them online on iTunes. Um, David Russo, who's, if you look at these characters. Oh, this so great, cool. right? He's absolutely That's beautiful so cool. art. He's amazing. Incredible art. And then this, which was just done, uh, Leah Tischioni, who is known as At Secret Cran. I met her through Tom Green. Tom's one of my closest friends mm -hmm. and a former client. And that it's Tom's girlfriend. And I looked at all these these cartoons she was doing, this art stuff, New Yorker type stuff. And I said, hey, would you do a cover for us? So when she did Super the picture, cool. um, I loved it because somebody said, well, it doesn't look exactly like you. And I said, if I wanted it to look exactly like this, we would have taken Take a picture. picture. Yeah. <laughs> right. Jeez, the anticipation of that. that. My so, word. so knowing and celebrating the psychic uh, you know, money and, and abundance that we all have, I just want to say that knowing as a doctor of divinity that whatever we put out comes back multiplied abundantly, whether it be good or bad. And mm -hmm. so we just know that what you are putting out is all great juju, art, and all the above. So thank we you celebrate much. you today for thank sure. You. And you you motivation. Congratulations. Great studios here. Yeah. Thank you so you're, much. You're to the daytime Emmys. We, we are. are excited. Say mm -hmm. hi to David Michaels. He's the producer. He's a great guy. Oh, great job. Daytime Emmys is fun because the the fan base for daytime TV is fanatical. I mean, you can be the 19th lead on a soap opera that airs once a month, <laughs> and you have they you know, know you. A, a fan club. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. Yeah. We're, excited. we're really excited. And we're excited to see you perform with the Tearaways June 24th at the legendary Troubadour. Tickets are on sale now. Stay Thank tuned. You. We'll be back with more on Good Morning La La Land.